early 1970s Admiral portable black and white tube television. We'll just call this a 1970 model year. I actually like working on these. They're easy for me to fix. Um, uh, grew up working on them. Especially this instant on stuff. This is an instant on set. And uh, I picked this up at that TV shop where I picked up a, like five or six sets. Uh, it's in bad shape, but that's okay. This might actually be kind of a resurrection. instant play or perma bake oh, looks like they were using it up into the 75 ohm era I already took a look inside of it I'll admit I cheated yeah, let's see if we could get this to work. Uh, of course, we'll go through the standard steps, which are to check check the picture bulb. God, this thing is dirty. It was sitting like up in an attic type, uh, in a loft. And yeah, it's got slider controls. They only use these slider controls for so many years. Anyway, uh, let's see. Should we pop it open and check the picture bulb first and then move from there? Or what should we do? Let me think about this. T-A-I-W-A-N. These were everywhere uh, in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. You know, people would actually accept something like this and watch it, but not today. Of course, it doesn't work without a converter box. Um, 16 VALP. The model number is a 16P287C. What do we have? Five, five tubes, five compactrons. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. But the majority of the set is right here, five tubes. This was really the end of the line for tube stuff. This is when they started to refine it down to the very minimum. Let's test this 16 VALP4. See if I can break the neck off. See if the Instabake on cooked it. Hey, there's a footnote here to set a G1 to 70 volts, so let's pump that up. And uh, let's see, black and white, cut off. Give it a minute to get popping. Looks like Taiwan is in the house. Oh, that was nice. Did it just short? What what just happened there? What, what is going on here? Do we have a crappy socket or that thing was just going along and then it just went dink.
Okay, so it's marginal. It'll produce a picture. The faces might be smeary, the highlights might be smeary, and it might be cloudy, but it's marginal. You know, it's kind of still settling in a little bit, I think, too. Yeah, it'll be marginal. So the picture bulb is acceptable. It's not dead to the point where we can't proceed. All right, power has been applied. The vacuum bulbs are dimly lit. This is uh, what you call instant play mode. So that's just like the preheat. Energy Star uh, approved, absolutely. So let's see. Wow, power factor is 0.91. The power factor should be damn near zero. It should be. I don't know why it has any power factor unless they're using a diode or something to uh, lower the voltage for the filaments because it's a purely resistive load. So yeah, 30.3 VA and 27 watts. So that's interesting. We'll have to look at the schematic. Okay, there it is. Now we have 140 watts. 193 VA, so the power factor, yeah, went way down. 0.73. That's actually a lot of power for this. 140 watts. Oh yeah, that's that's getting hot. We got no sound. Got a little sound. Okay, um, that seems a little excessive. I don't want to burn up the horizontal output. I don't know how many watts this should use, maybe 90 to 120, 140 is way too much. I don't know what kind of operation what kind of operation is this? You know what? I don't want to yank on this and break it. Anyway. It's a high voltage rectifier and I never seen one in that kind of cavity. But yeah, I didn't hear when I turned it on, I didn't hear there was no high voltage, I didn't hear any vertical, and I didn't hear any horizontal. And 140 watts is not just filaments. Filaments should be about 50 watts maybe at the max. Fifty watts purely resistive load, which it's not, so we got problems here. So we have a set we can troubleshoot and maybe fix. Where is the flyback built in? Is this... This thing is like... The flyback is not accessible. It's just all in this plastic 
cavity here or does the top of this pop off? Well, let's not assume anything or jump to conclusions. Let's, uh, I guess the first thing we want to do is get a cathode current meter on that. Okay, this is the cathode current test adapter for 6JS6, uh, a Zenith color tube. Uh, but it gives us the plate on the 38 and 33G um, an H series. So let's see what we get here. The plate on the damper. So this will tell us how much current the horizontal circuit is drawing. Here we go. Oh. Oh boy. That would uh, EOL that tube in a real hurry. We're looking at like 100 milliamps max. In fact, that, that was scary high. Jeez. Let's try this experiment. Let's disconnect this. Now let's see what the wattage goes. Try and keep that from... So our wattage goes to 88 without a voltage to the horizontal circuit. So that means we're driving like uh, 50 watts through that tube. That's a little excessive. I would EOL that tube pretty quick. This looks like this is going to be a really good in-depth diagnostic video. I don't even see how that tube is conducting that much current. I thought that that tube, even if it had no uh, uh, G1 drive to it if the oscillator wasn't running I didn't even think it would shove 300 milliamps through it that's almost like something shorted in the flyback to ground that's that's an excessive amount of current it would be interesting to check the cathode because if we have 300 milliamps going into the damper and nothing on the cathode, that means it's the flyback is shorted to ground. So we're going to have to dig into this thing a little bit deeper. It's going to be a good one. I'm going to have to get back to it tomorrow. It's getting dark earlier and earlier. I'm just sitting at the computer here taking a peek at the schematic. and there's no reason why the vertical circuit here shouldn't run independent of the horizontal not working. I'm looking for something common between the horizontal and the vertical, why the vertical wouldn't, we wouldn't hear that. Uh, well, it does use a 400 volt boost, but I don't think that would keep it from running. See, it uses 115 volts on the G2 here. It uses a uh, 130 volt source on the plate. The um, vertical uses 130 on the plate. I'm sorry, the horizontal uses 130 on the plate as well as the vertical. And the horizontal output G2 uses the 115 source. So, unless, if the 115 was gone, we wouldn't have that huge amount of current conducting through here, unless there's a short here somewhere, and we have the 115 gone and a short. Uh, so, yeah, this is an interesting one. There's, this is not logically panning out for me unless it's multiple, multiple problems. Um, the audio, yes, the audio, as in most of these, uses the boost to power the plate of the detector. Um, but again, we might be able to still get some noise through the audio. The audio uses the 145 for the audio output. Yeah, I'm just looking for a common denominator here. You know, why why multiple things appear not to be working. And it could just be it needs the boost in order to... Does this get... 
fact it looks like the only place looks like the only place the uh, the plate of the multi vibrator so yeah it must need the boost because the boost voltage comes up through here boost is generated by the flyback and comes up through here and powers the plate so maybe that's why our vertical is not running yeah see the boost comes off right down here yeah, we got to get the horizontal working. We got to find out why we should have a hundred volt uh, pulse here. So we could start by checking that. And where I've where I've got the meter tapped in is right here, right at pin two is where the meter's tapped in. All right, let's dig into this a little bit. Nerdgasm time. So yesterday. This is the original Admiral 38HE7HK7 that was in the set. Uh, yesterday we were measuring the current on pin 2, which like I said, this is for a color TV. So pin 2 on this tube is the plate of the damper. So yesterday, yesterday we measured, we cut this, we interrupted this, and we had 300 plus milliamps. Okay, today what I've done, this is a sacrificial 33 GY7. It's pretty much the same tube. It's just a little bit lighter. The only difference is when you use a 33 GY7 in place of a 38, you have to cut off pin 7 because pin 7 is a center tap into the filaments. And sometimes they have that grounded. And then what I've done is I've lifted the cathode. See how I've done it here? I just bent it off to the side. I cut off pin 7, which is a center tap into the filament, and I lifted pin 8. See right there, pin 8. So we can measure the cathode current. And the cathode current should, this is saying 122 milliamps. So now, if we have no current here, then the short is somewhere right here. If we have the 300 plus milliamps over here, that, that means that we need to diagnose the circuit. So let's see what we got. Okay, this is connected now to the cathode, so here we go. This tube's a little bit weaker, so, okay, shut off, shut off. Come on, bad power switch. This tube's a little bit weaker, so it's probably not going to pass the same amount of current as this one. I have a feeling this one's in good shape. That's why I don't want to destroy it. Where this one, I know it's weak. So let's blow the weak one up. Okay, so we've cut it here. We have 300 milliamps. We've cut it here. We have 300 milliamps. That's a good sign that shows that something's not shorted to ground here, but why, why are we drawing so much? So the next thing we want to check, we want to check this right here. Here, 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 here. How do I get to that from here? Should have negative 28 volts, <clears throat> which should indicate that the oscillator is oscillating. And we don't. We don't have negative 28 volts. So the oscillator is not oscillating. Okay, well do we have a bad 8LT8, which is back here? Oh, there it goes. Just a, dir just a dirty tube socket. I move it around. All of a sudden it wakes up. That's still excessive cathode current though, but our, our drive is way too low.
So unscrewing this is dropping the cathode current and raising the voltage. I feel like I've almost unscrewed the core out of the I feel like I've unscrewed the core out of the form in there. There's still no high voltage yet. This is looking at the uh, horizontal output G1 and it's way too fast. It should be around 15.5 kilohertz and it should be 100 volts, not 135 volts. So let, let's see if I turn this in what happens. So it's, that's slowing it down. I'm going back towards where it was before I screwed with it. Wow, interesting, you get to 15.5 right where it should be and it's right at 100 volts. And the cathode current didn't skyrocket like it did before. Still no high voltage to speak of. Sounds like there's a little down there, but there's nothing much up here. And I still don't hear the vertical running. And the vertical tube is getting melty hot. So what's going on here? Okay, to recap, yesterday we checked here, we had 300 milliamps pegged. Today we checked here, we had 300 milliamps pegged. Turned out the oscillator wasn't running, I just wiggled the, the 8LT8 tube around, started running, then we had this funky thing where the cathode current was too high, I started screwing with the horizontal hold control, it came down, but the frequency was too high. Then I turned it off and turned it back on, and now I can adjust it to the proper frequency and the cathode current doesn't run away. So what are we dealing with here? Bad capacitors, probably? Uh, the capacitors are the root of all the world's evils. So I want to check this point right here. I want to see what this is. Pin uh, 6. I don't even know how we get to the uh, pins. I don't even know how we service this thing. I, I don't even know how to get this tube out of here. Who came up with this operation? Um, or it's also yellow going to the yoke. Can we get, I don't see a yellow going to the, uh, well, maybe I do. No, we can't get to those wires. Okay, let me figure out how to get to this point. I want to check this 400 volt boost. Okay, those two capacitors, the two boost filters are those capacitors right back there. Those two ceramic tubular paper Thingies. Looks like I have 329 volts on what should be 400. That's not excessively low. Look at this. Here's instructions on how to disassemble this thing that looks like you got it from the plumbing department at Home Depot. See, but that stupid strap to get the socket off isn't there. I just wonder if it's got a bad high voltage rectifier tube. They, they're a common failure part. 
look at that green pins green pins are bad and it also looks like it's cracked see the crack in it so this thing really only has two pins why why does it have three up here doesn't it have a heater are all they okay maybe they're all joined together quit it it shows yeah maybe it is only three pins interesting so it's just the plate cap which is down here and then the two kind of horse what kind of rectifier tube is that well I would definitely say this is bad right here is where the getter should be uh, it looks very corroded I've never seen this tube before I will be completely honest I've never seen never seen this one could probably substitute uh, something else in what's the other one 1x2 is that the other common one um, that is very green but let's see if we get at least a centimeter arc out of it the oscillator just started Not quite, maybe six millimeters, but watch the cathode current when I do that. So, uh, I would expect a little bit hotter of a spark there. I, it's, well, it must be some kind of low, low voltage CRT, only 10 kilovolts. What we could do is we could pop our diode in there. I could just pop a television focus rectifier in there. Okay, color television, selenium stack focus rectifier, microwave my testicles, take one. Actually, this would be more like X radiation, X rays coming out of here. And I don't know. Oscillator started. I might have that diode in there backwards. Of course, one of the leads broke off of it. Yeah, it must be in backwards. Crap. All right, well, no one ever said life was supposed to be safe. Safety is boring. Oh, yeah, I hear it. Eight kilovolts, but like I said earlier that tube is a little weak oh yeah no vertical so and the horizontal deflection it's not going all the way to the end so now we have high voltage now we just need the vertical you know I'd probably I don't mind ordering one of these tubes I can't imagine this would be very expensive if you could even find it but um, I'd like to make sure the vertical is working because if the vertical output transformer is shorted or something that could be a big problem so I know we have excessive cathode current draw here because this thing gets blazing hot I'm gonna pop a new 23 Z9 in here before we go any further um, it's not good to basically this tube is basically red plating I mean it is hot because the oscillator is not running like the horizontal output if the oscillator is not running it'll just sit there and just draw current and self-destruct you know I was just thinking I usually get these tubes from ESRC in Orlando Florida and most of these are a dollar each these are in the dollar tube uh, check out because nobody works on old TVs except me and a few other people that use these compactrons 
I wonder if ESRC is going to still be around after Dorian. Uh, that's a kind of a, a dirty thought. I would hate anything to happen to that outlet because they have everything. All right, we are not going to let this go for long because I am not going to destroy my new 23Z9. I did kind of clean that up so that looks a little bit better. I do not hear vertical. I do not see vertical. That's it. So why would the vertical not be running? Well, the most common cause of that is usually capacitors, but, but with exceptions, looking at these capacitors, these are all more modern film capacitors that typically don't short or go bad. And um, I think what we should do is we should start let me look at this for a moment. And we're going to start by checking the center tap of the height control, which is right there. Our boost comes in through the uh, 1 meg resistor. Let's see what it is. Okay, well that's obvious. Sounds like the vertical's running all of a sudden. Which it is. Why? What did I do? All I did was I put the original tube back in and put this on here. Okay, this TV is a trip. This TV is an absolute trip. I didn't do anything to it. What does it take to clean this tube? A little WD-40. palabras y quedará grabado en sus corazones. Primer Congreso Internacional para Padres de Familia, 22 de septiembre, Centro de Convenciones de Anaheim. Nadie dijo que ser papá sería fácil, pero te enseñaremos a que no sea un problema. Channel 6. Importante, lo es todo. Importante. Racional. Look at that, it ro locks in rock solid. And that's just with a clip lead for an antenna. 
the focus is crap. High voltage is low. Come on. Happened to Importante here. We, y liberación de Gabriela Toledo y el ingeniero Benjamín Sepúlveda. Este libro te ayudará a descubrir el origen de tus problemas y cómo salir de ellos. Solicítalo en nuestras librerías Santa María del Monte, en las sedes de Hatter. Working, I don't get it. I don't get it. Now keep in mind that channel 6 analog is also at the bottom of the FM dial. So you might think, well, no one's watching Analog Channel 6. Well, yeah, but some people are listening. To, a lot of people are listening to it on 87.7 or whatever it is. 80, yeah, 87.7, 87.9, somewhere in there. So a lot of people are listening to this in their car. All right, let's, um, I'm going to put the original 33 HE7 back in and we'll see if we get the high voltage back up and fill out the horizontal deflection here. Okay, with the 38 HK7 back in there, we're getting right on uh, 10 kilovolts. But what is all this trash? <laughs> What's going on here? There's all these lines, like it's arcing. Okay, I don't think our selenium rectifier liked that extra two or three kilovolts because it, the picture slowly got dim and then the smoke started to come out. Okay, uh, yeah, I ruined that. Uh, I went back to our silic 30 kilovolt silicon diode, and I'm getting, talk about efficiency, check this out. 15 kilovolts. So that's a 30 kilovolt silicon diode. I was going to try these. These are two diodes out of a microwave oven. I put them in series. I bet these would work too. These are silicon microwave oven diodes. But that's working kick ass. And look at how bright and sharp this is. Wow. What a trip, man. The, the ballad of the self-fixing television. Uh, what, a, what a trip. So what did we really come up with? The vertical fixed itself. The horizontal was just a loose tube or, or dirty socket. And the high voltage rectifiers, bad. Gone to air. And I should make clear that this is designed for color television focus, which is like four to six kilovolts, and it's uh, ultra low current. This is uh, probably about one milliamp going through that, and that doesn't seem like a lot, but one milliamp at at uh, ten kilovolts is what ten watts. It's uh, quite a bit. You know, if you think about this as a resistor, you know, 10 watts flowing through this. With the obvious lack of efficiency, I mean, we were only getting 10 volts, I mean, 10 kilovolts out of this, we're getting 15 kilovolts out of that. So there's a lot less drop across that one. Of course, the tube has a lot of drop across it, it's very lossy, but who cares? It's a tube, so it gets hot. I mean, but you can't force a diode like that to get hot. It'll expire. For scientific purposes, we can cut this open and look at the selenium wafers. Maybe. Well, they want to come out when the camera is not rolling. There are these little wafers. And yes, selenium is actually a supplement the human body needs. It's a metal. And well, you get the idea. It's these little wafers, selenium wafers, just stacked up in there to create a higher voltage, higher breakdown voltage. 
And yeah, I think they all melted together because usually when you cut these open, they just pour out. So let's get this cleaned up and watch some evening news on it. So freaking dirty. All right, two hands will make better of this. Oh, by the way, this is a $1 tube on ESRC. Minimum order of uh, 10 tubes at $1 each. Pretty much every tube in this is in the $1 listing chart. So I might just order some. The Hurricane doesn't get them. I'd like to fix it right. I like these sets, even though they're totally worthless. Check out the cigarette burns. Isn't that classy? It's a bondage and discipline set. Yeah, it would clean up nice, but let's get some uh, crepe erase going on here. All right, first let's adjust the self-fixing vertical and try and get it. This is something that's very easy to do with the generator and very hard to do without the generator. So there's that. Boy, is that a great picture. back check it out so ESR ESRC tubes right then we go here to dollar days and every single tube in this TV is in these one dollar uh, so dollar days and I order from here minimum 10 piece order uh, yeah it's already expired but whatever he, he the guy that owns it's real cool so uh, one AY2, they have it. Um, every single tube, 8LT8, that's the horizontal oscillator that was had a flaky socket, was loose in the socket or not conducting. 38HE7, uh, 23Z9, 23Z9, 14BF11, uh, let's see, 17, uh, 17BF11, that's the audio tube, 14, uh, BL11, that's the IF. Every single tube in this TV is a dollar. But check this out. So we go order form, right here, order form. been disabled because of the um, hurricane so hang in there ESRC I hope you make it through and I'll order these tubes uh, and they have every other tube in here too you know at reasonable prices so this is a good place to order tubes uh, Never, I order here all the time, never got a broken one, they're pretty cheap. And for what I do, like I say, the, all the tube, all the, all the series string tubes for TVs are all a dollar each. You know, that's why I see these people trying to sell these tube caddies for 500 bucks. Yeah, right. Instant on. Category 5 storm headed right for the east 
The Dorian is already pounding the Bahamas as one of the strongest storms ever to hit the island chain. Well, that storm surge is already swamping Abaco Island. Celebrity chef Jose Andres just posted a video from the hurricane zone. And as you can see in here, the wind is so strong you can barely hear what he's saying. Tonight, mandatory evacuation orders have just been issued for parts of South Carolina, Florida as well. Our Nicole Killian is in Jacksonville, Florida with the latest on the hurricane that is expected to make landfall there within a day or so. Dorian bore down on the northern Bahamas as a Category 5 hurricane on Sunday, one of the most powerful to hit the area in modern times. Officials warned islanders to seek shelter if they hadn't already. This is not a time for us to um, seek to resist. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis urged people to remain vigilant. The strength of this storm cannot be underestimated. President Trump and cabinet members met with FEMA officials who are moving food, water, and generators into the southeastern U.S. We expect that much of the eastern seaboard will be ultimately impacted and some of it very, very severely. Beaches in Jacksonville are shutting down tonight until further notice while residents and tourists keep a close eye on the storm's track. Hopefully it stays out at sea and we just get some of the wind and rain. Palm Beach and several other Florida counties... I think this barber polling, rolling thing here is probably that solid state rectifier. ...and low-lying areas. And in Cocoa Beach, Cape Canaveral Hospital evacuated patients with the hurricane's path still uncertain. Yeah, definitely a lot of questions. Meteorologist Amber Lee has more about the storm track. All right, yeah. so the good news right now, the eye has been shrinking within this hurricane, so uh, it's starting to lose a little bit more steam, but it is still a very dangerous and powerful CRT hurricane. CRT looks good. You can see her face right is pretty, no blowouts or especially over the land. white spots. The uh, right now, it looks like it will get very close to Florida, but it's supposed to make a turn more to the north, uh, more northward, toward Georgia or the Carolinas, but again, the outer bands of this hurricane could really cause some havoc also for the eastern portion of Florida, where we still have these hurricane warnings and also strong storm surge warnings as well. So this is something that we'll continue to watch, but take a look. Dorian, right now we have winds up to about 185 miles per hour, and then it's going to continue to remain. So it's going to continue to trek. This is what the the projected path is right now. So the models are trending that this is what it looks like. But again, this could all change because we've, we've watched this the last few days and each and every day uh, things are moving a little bit differently. But it's slowing down a little bit more because it has moved over uh, the island chains of the Bahamas. So it's going to continue to stay a Category 5 hurricane and then it looks like by the time we head into Labor Day Monday, it could weaken down to a Category 4 and it looks like it's going to just skirt right off the coast of Florida and then work its way toward the Carolinas. So again, this is something that we're watching, but the outer bands will continue uh, to really affect the eastern portion of Florida. Right now we have a few computer models that say that it could make its way onto Daytona Beach, while another two says it skirts right away from this area and goes right toward the Carolinas. So again, things are really fluid. We're going to be watching this for the next few days, but just know that it will remain a major hurricane at least for the next few days through the Labor Day weekend. Back to you guys. Yeah, Amber, obviously a lot of things changing. We will stay on top of it. Stay with CBS2 News, CBSLA.com, and our streaming service, CBSN Los Angeles, for the very latest information on Hurricane Dorian as the storm heads for the U.S. Okay, developing news now. Police say in Texas that this is the face of a killer, the 36-year-old man who left a trail of dead and wounded across Midland and Odessa during a rampage yesterday. The tubes came in, so let's complete the Admiral black and white video. This is from ESRC, and these are all $1 tubes. And this is, I don't know, about $25 worth or something. TV tubes are extremely abundant and cheap. And from the right source. So what did I get here? One AY2, those are the high voltage tubes for this set. And because they're so cheap, I always 
pick up you know three of them what's th what's three dollars what will three dollars buy today it won't buy hardly a candy bar or a soda or a bottle of water so so I got some 23Z9s, I got this 8LT8s, um, 6CL3 is the color damper, 3A3 is the color uh, high voltage rectifier, 14BL11, 23Z9, 8BM8, those are all these compactrons that are in here. 6BA11 is a Zenith color compactron, 6ME8 is a Zenith color demodulator, uh, 1BC2 is for uh, BNK1077, that's a video that will be coming up. So let's do a little testing here. Let's see what the high voltage is with the rectifier diode versus the tube. Okay, we're at 16 kilovolts with the solid state diode. Jesus, man. The, the diode isn't even long enough to, to resist the high voltage. X-ray radiation warning. Tube includes X-ray shielding, shielded. So it has X-ray proof glass, is that what it is? Anyway, here's a look at the old one versus the new one where the old one went to air and the getter is clear. See the getter there is clear. Over here it's still good. Brand new. This is not really the most user-friendly design. I mean, I guess that's kind of how it... Guess that's kind of how it goes. All right, here we go. I mean, I guess they really just didn't expect you to ever have to replace this tube. Wow, 16 kilovolts. Nice. So the new rectifier tube is as, just as efficient as uh, the silicon diode. I hope I don't destroy the camera doing this. I'm going to try not to, but I'm going to touch that high voltage and it, all it's going to do is make me jump a little bit. Wow. Yeah, it, that's all it does. Leave the tag for approximately $1,200. Sign up now and use promo code JOIN NOW to save 25% off your first year. That's as low as nine. Works nice. And you notice there's no more of those weird. I need to adjust the vertical a little bit. I don't know why the vertical would have changed by just changing the, uh, the tube. But maybe what happened is the tube is because the tube filament is now loading down the flyback. Maybe it dropped the boost a little bit. That's why the vertical's gotten stretched at the top. But there is no more wavy lines. Ah, maybe there is. But they're much smaller than with the diode, at least it looks like. Actually, it's not bad. It looks pretty good. Or maybe what's happened is the horizontal width has shrank a little bit from the load of the high voltage rectifier filament. I don't know, everything interacts, but it actually has a really clear, sharp picture.